सो आई थिंक टैलेंट क्रंच इज ए वेरी काइंड ऑफ ए रेलिवेंट थिंग इन द करेंट कॉन्टेक्सट स्पेशली ऑल्सो आफ्टर द कोविड एंड वर्क फ्रॉम होम सो आई थिंक वट्स हैपनिंग इज दैट द पीपल बेसिकली आर लुकिंग फॉर वेरी हाई ग्रोथ यू नो एरियाज एंड इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू यू नो काइंड ऑफ रिटेन दैम यू रियली नीड टू गिव दम लॉड ऑफ मीट एंड सो दैट दे कैन परफॉर्म दे कैन हैव यू नो मोर डाइवर्सिटी इन द वर्क दे हैंडल दे गेट गुड कॉम्पनसेशन दे गेट रिकग्नाइज फास्ट secondly i think uh, we are trying to invest as much as uh, we can uh, in the training and upskilling them so we have our in house uh, you know learning portal we are also encouraging them to go attend uh, you know industry seminars industry uh, uh, events uh, we also try and give them cross functional uh, uh, you know opportunities in the sense somebody who is an fpna you know wants some knowledge in taxation so we encourage that they also can play a good role in the, that side of the you know function so there are some of these things which kind of make them feel that uh, it's uh, they're getting growth in their own uh, profile and uh, somehow it helps to scale them up in their own uh, uh, skill set and you know which can be used by the organization uh, in many ways situations where uh, you have still a talent deficit in the sense uh, there are see lot of things which uh, uh, sometimes it's not uh, appropriate to invest As, for example if you are say starting a project or you there are some uh, seasonal activities or there is some uh, you know special projects going on then sometimes you try and see if we, somebody can uh, help from the outside right and uh, so yes there are uh, uh, firms there are partners available in the market who can give you uh, similar solutions uh, even in the cfo support even on the fpna support even on the taxation support and yes i think uh, it's a good mix to have your own internal resources with uh, you know good partners around and i think a good balance uh, can kind of result in a uh, win win situation uh, and also optimizing the cost and returns uh, at the same time yeah i think it's a very good question i feel the finance guys are the custodians of the company uh, i always say that they are the exit gate uh, they are the ones who facilitate you know growth in the business they partner the business and you know they can make the life of the business operations very easy how they can do it i think the best way is that you kind of align them and align their mindset to the strategy of the company if everybody is into it in the sense that they also know that what role they can play in making sure that the organization overall is successful and they know what the organization strategy is i am sure it makes their job and it makes everybody else's job who deal with them much more easier and productive and i think it's a great win win for the organization so it's uh, definitely very very important uh, for them to be aligned to the strategic uh, objectives of the organization there is a lot of focus on uh, i won't say top management but i would say critical resources and yes they are treated very differently uh, and we kind of make sure is that we have the best uh, incentive plans for them we have the best uh, you know uh, development uh, uh, you know programs for them whether it is internal or external uh, we also give them opportunity to grow uh, means that if they are in one function we try and give them opportunity to handle uh, some other uh, functions as well even if it means that they have to learn and deliver i think we kind of take that risk and uh, i think yeah putting these three four things together and of course uh, continuous mentorship uh, giving them an idea that uh, you know their their uh, contributions are very valuable for the organization if we are able to kind of put them all these 
four or five things together uh, at the right time in the right uh, proportion, I feel uh, we can kind of retain top talent, critical talent with us and uh, it can help company grow uh, and also those people individually, personally and professionally as well. My personal take is that yes, it does benefit uh, to a very large extent that you can always uh, uh, you know, put non-core activities in, in such a way that uh, it can be taken care of by technology, uh, by automating them, by <clears throat> you know, using all uh, uh, kind of latest uh, technologies uh, and chat GPT is, is the, that's the new kid in the town right now. And, uh, at the same time, I also feel that sometimes, you know, having getting into the new technologies does not always mean that you have to get rid of people. Actually, that new technology which you are kind of going to adapt will require, again, resources who are good in that technology to take care of it. Uh, so, for example, I give you a very, very practical example from my experience that uh, suppose there was a time when everybody was uh, in a rush to implement ERP, uh, whether it was SAP or Oracle or whatever. But what I have seen is that, you know, uh, yes, the initial uh, game plan was to make it very efficient organization in terms of end to end, uh, uh, all like functions talking to each other through that ERP. But what also we realized it is that in order for that ERP to go, and run you know seamlessly without any glitches without having any hindrance uh, to the business there was a large workforce which was appointed to take care of that whole erp you know anybody who is partnering uh, with any of these organizations uh, you know who are into these services uh, I think it is not uh, kind of very straightforward to always uh, calculate the ROI, but uh, but there are multiple benefits, uh, you know, which the organization really gets out of these uh, services when they are partnered, uh, which means that you are letting the specialists do what they are good at. So there is a very little risk you carry in terms of, you know, tomorrow if you are kind of outdated or you don't have a relevance of that particular services which you required at particular point of time but not important anymore so you get that flexibility i think uh, there can't be a better roi than that if you have that flexibility to kind of not commit your capital i think that's the biggest uh, uh, advantage uh, you really come across when you deal with partnerships like that uh, secondly i think you get the best of the uh, services in, in the sense that the quality uh, at the same time becomes like uh, great. So overall, uh, I would say if you put together these quantitative and qualitative factors together, I think uh, it definitely gives you a great uh, you know, ROI and one can evaluate uh, depending on what kind of uh, services you are looking from those partners. I think uh, yeah, so <clears throat> first and foremost, it's very important to uh, know that uh, how uh, established that partner is. Because when you're going to extend your business support to somebody, you know, outside the organization, it's very important that the continuity should not be uh, hindered, you know, it has to go seamless. It should not happen that the organization you are partnering with has, uh, you know, lack of capital, lack of people they don't have a stability or they're very, very new uh, and yet to prove, you know, what they are into uh, in terms of the product. Keeping the long term in mind, you, you should never kind of uh, look at one year, two years, uh, three years horizon. I think when you're getting into a partnership, you should at least look at five years plus horizon. And uh, that's how you should uh, look at the deal and uh, look at the commercials to, you know, make it uh, work for both uh, otherwise. And yeah, I think these are two main things I would say. Uh, and of course, the reference check is very important from your current clients uh, and how you're performing uh, both very large and very small. I think both will give a real uh, true picture about the partner in terms of how they are kind of providing services. <laughs>